baddies, hey bitches, what is up and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe, smash that thumbs up button and feel free to comment or question anything down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so in today's video I wanted to talk briefly about what doctors don't tell you in terms of surgery. Basically I just want to cover all the little basics of what you need to know before you ever consider putting yourself under the knife or having any form of plastic surgery because when you go to the websites and you look at doctors pages and stuff everything seems glorious surgery seems glorious but there's a lot of details that are not really put out there and you only realize them once you yourself have undergone plastic surgery you went under the knife there's a lot that you learn from these experiences so i just really want to share the information with anyone who is considering plastic surgery because there's a lot of things that you need to consider before going through with it okay and it's your responsibility to do research whether it's through youtube videos girls who've done these these types of procedures before realself.com asking the doctor tons of questions and just doing your due diligence when it comes to surgery but like i said not everything is put out there in the open so you really really have to do some digging before going through with such a huge decision so things you need to know before considering plastic surgery things that doctors don't tell you i have a little list in front of me this is not like the entire list but this is things that have came to my mind based on things that i've been through so they're not in any particular order but for me so far i've had lipo 360 i've had a brazilian butt lift around one and two and now i've had a full extended tummy tuck from hip to hip with muscle repair so i've undergone like major plastic surgery twice so, so number one is weight gain so when you do a brazilian butt lift you have to understand that if you gain weight after the surgery it will go to your backside it did for me and it changed my butt so much so my stomach had the lipo 360 at first and i took longer to gain weight there because that's the area that they lipoed but i had more fat going straight to my butt and then more i had more fat going straight to my butt and also to the areas of my body that were not lipoed so like your arms your thighs the fat needs to go somewhere so because you lipo there it's gonna avoid going there but it will go to where they put the new fat so my butt as soon as i started to gain weight my butt just get getting bigger and bigger and bigger and that might sound cool for some girls that do want a larger backside after surgery but you have to make sure that you're eating right you have to make sure that you continue to go to the gym because if you're gaining weight and your butt is just getting bigger and bigger it's also going to get sloppier and sloppier and it will end up like sagging or just looking somewhat abnormal and just out of shape and sloppy so you want to be very very careful with weight gain after you do a brazilian butt lift if you do want to gain weight fine but do it in a healthy manner and make sure that you're also balancing that out by going to the gym and keeping everything nice and toned next um in terms of the weight gain going to your ass your skin might not be elastic enough to hold up the new fat that you put in your backside and that's part of the issue that i had with my bbl since day one well not since day one but since my first surgery and like about six months after the surgery is when i first started to notice a slight deformity on my butt on the lower butt cheeks and it's because your weight is now heavier in that area so the fat in your butt is now fighting against gravity and it could cause sagging and that's something that you really want to think about is like how elastic is your skin is or do you drink a lot of water are you in good con in good shape are you healthy like are you young are you youthful like all of that stuff will impact the elasticity of your skin and whether or not it can hold up the weight of the bbl now i think my first first doctor actually put a lot of fat in my butt more than i probably wanted to and then combine that with weight gain that i naturally was doing just because i wasn't taking care of myself and i wasn't eating properly it ended up growing getting sloppy and sagging so that's something you're really going to want to be aware about is the elasticity of your skin will determine how well your butt holds up after a bbl the major 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 one and i should have put this honestly as number one is you can die from a bbl yes it's super important to find yourself the best doctor don't try to save a few dollars and put your life on the line for plastic surgery yes you can try to find the best board certified plastic surgeon but 
every surgery has risks and BBL is the number one surgery that is the most risk when it comes to putting yourself on that operating table because you can die like that. If the fat goes into your bloodstream, it goes straight to your heart, you have an instant heart attack, within minutes you are dead and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it and you'll never wake up from the surgery. So that's one of the biggest things that you need to consider before even putting yourself in a position to get a BBL. Is it worth putting yourself on the line? Is Are you willing to risk it all? And honestly, like I've made a video like this before and I ended up doing the surgery again. So that just shows how insane women are when it comes to beauty. And again, I'm one of them. And if I could honestly go back to the first procedure, I would have never touched my butt because of how dangerous a BBL is. And the only reason I did the second round was because I really, really needed to fix this area that I had an issue with in my butt and I wasn't happy but honestly I should have even left it alone at that point because it's just selfish of women especially of mothers if you have children that you can possibly leave behind now I felt so comfortable with my doctor and before I went into the surgery like I gave him a whole speech of why I need to wake up from the surgery and he made me feel so comfortable and I just felt like I was in the best hands possible. What else factored into me getting this second round was that my butt was already huge. So I didn't think they were going to be putting in too much fat. And he didn't. Um, they just put in a little bit in the top of my butt. Like very little bit in the top of my butt. And they removed fat from the bottom of my butt. So it wasn't like a full BBL like my first first surgery was. So to me, it wasn't nearly as risky as the first round. So that's why I felt very comfortable doing it a second round. Um, again, I didn't go in to make my ass bigger because my ass was already big going into this surgery. So it was more so just to correct some imperfections that I had with my first round. So... Um, it's just something that you really need to be aware of is that you can die. I think the death rate is one in 3000. That's how common it is. And it is the most dangerous medical procedure that you can do. So yes, all surgery has risks. BBL has the highest risk. So if you can, my biggest advice would be to get a tummy tuck, get your liposuction, get snatched, but maybe leave the butt alone. Or there's a lot of newer non-invasive procedures that you can do to help lift your butt and create a bigger butt without necessarily putting your life on the line. Um, okay, next up, surgery becomes addictive. Once you have your first surgery and you see how, e how easy it is to alter your body that dramatically, you'll end up wanting to get more work. So that's something that you really need to think about, especially if you're one of those people that have that addictive personality. It is addictive and you will end up wanting more or you'll end up wanting multiple rounds of like a BBL or multiple liposuction. Let's say you'll gain a lot of weight and oh, I'm just going to get lipo again. And then you just keep getting lipo every time you gain weight or you fix your butt, you fix your stomach, now you want to do your boobs, or then you want to do your face, and it's just, it's it's a downward, downward spiral from there. So surgery is very addictive, and I honestly, I have like felt that myself, but that's why I'm not going to do my boobs, because I feel like I'm going to end up taking it too far, and I've already seen the complications that come with a BBL. I know there's complications that come with breast implants, and I do not want to deal with any of those complications, so I'm just going to leave my little titties alone and just embrace what God gave me here. So um, be mindful of that. Surgery is addicting. Um, now, a BBL comes with health risks. Like, for example, your butt might always hurt. Like, right now, my butt is kind of fresh out of surgery. But when I did my first round, even years later, if I did like a squat or if I jumped, I would feel a slight pain in my butt cheeks. So it will hurt over time. And because of the weight that you now carry on your backside, my knees hurt more, my feet hurt more. And honestly, my body hurts more overall. So that's something to think about. I've always had back problems and I think having all this weight now on my backside has increased those back problems. Once again, my knees hurt, my feet hurt, my body hurts. And I honestly think that it has a lot to do with my BBL. So be mindful that there are health risks and there are going to be life long symptoms that you may feel as a result of your surgeries. Um, 
Next up, as we age, our skin does become less, ela less elastic. So do I worry a little bit? No, because I'm going to really be trying to have a fit life for the rest of my life. Honestly, I feel like the surgery has changed my life and my lifestyle. But... Um, but as we age, our skin does become less elastic. So if you look at somebody like me and you see how large the backside is, think about that. The older I get, I'm already 33. If I don't maintain, if I don't work out, if I don't eat clean, if I don't stay toned, my butt is just going to get heavier and saggier and saggier and saggier and it's not going to look good. I'll develop a lot of cellulite on my thighs and on my butt as I get older. So if you are going to go into this, you have to think about what you're going to look like when you're older and what you're going to do as you age to help protect your skin and help protect your body overall from really, really like succumbing to like natural aging. So that's something you need to really be mindful of as well. Another thing that you have to think about is the criticism that you're going to deal with after surgery or even when you approach people about what you're going to get done. Now, this is also for people that are on social media, but you're going to deal with a lot of hate. People are going to feel like they can just tell you whatever they want to tell you about your body because you got it done. Like, I have so much hate on my, my body from men and from women. I also have a lot of love from men and from women, but I definitely have a lot of hate and a lot of criticism. And it's like because you get surgery, people think it's an open invitation for them to just critique you or tell you what they feel about your body. And if you're on social media, you, you just have to take it because in a way, you're putting yourself out there like that. So that's definitely a big thing. People will judge you more harshly than with a natural body. With a natural body, everybody oh, oh, is all love. Like, I mean, you obviously still have some trolls that just hate no matter what. But with natural body, a lot of women have a lot more love, even if there's imperfections because it's natural. But when you have your body done, it's immediate, like, hate. And I feel like people judge you a lot more harshly because of the, of the surgery. Um, people feel like they have a right to put you down. Typical comments that I get all the time are plastic, get a refund, you should recycle that, thanks for saving the ocean, thanks for saving the turtles. They'll put like vomit emojis and they will always constantly say, oh, you looked better before, you looked better before. So like that's something that you have to think about. And it's not just on my videos. I watch other girls' videos that honestly look good and the comments are always, always negative and it's just insane why people feel like they have a right to judge you just because you did something to your body um also you're gonna critique yourself even more because i paid for certain things about my body i judge myself more harshly and i look at certain things or i'm more unhappy because i'm like damn i spent this amount of money to not even like this part of my body like that's ridiculous so like i critique myself more and you'll end up doing that self doing that most likely as well is looking in yourself in the mirror and kind of judging yourself a little bit more harshly and just being rough on yourself and i'm honestly learning through this second round is that i'm gonna have to learn to embrace the imperfection surgery does not guarantee that you are gonna have the perfect body it does not guarantee that one bit. Just because you have surgery doesn't mean that the doctor is going to do, do, do a good job. Doesn't mean that you're going to do a good job taking care of yourself afterwards. It doesn't guarantee the results. Just because you see images on social media of what other girls look like and you think if you show a doctor that picture that you're going to end up coming lo looking like that. No. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's body reacts to surgery differently. All the doctor can do is his best job while you're on the table. All you can do is your best job to maintain yourself after. But at the end of the day, no one knows exactly how you're going to end up. In real life, you're going to get a lot of attention that is not necessarily wanted. Like, sometimes I can laugh and smile and be polite to people, but also some people think, like, it's immediate for them to be just, like, jaw-dropping and, like, staring at you or disrespectful with their comments. And, like, you literally, de depending on, like, where you live, especially for me, I live in the Bronx, you literally have to have thick skin if you decide to do a surgery that makes your body look a little bit exaggerated and fake or a lot of bit exaggerated and fake it's gonna invite a lot a lot of unwanted attention from men and negative attention from women people judging you with their eyes and 
also people loving you and say hey you look great like you'll have a mixture of everything but you have to be aware that your body is going to be a big source of attention now um, I'm sure that's it for now. I'm sure there are other points that I did not mention and um, There's other videos that I want to make along these lines, but for now I just want to keep it a little bit short and to the point. Hopefully I did that <laughs> I have a tendency to go off on a tangent sometimes, but I hope that this video was helpful Definitely keep these things in mind before you consider booking your next surgery and just do your research Look at doctors before and after pictures Make sure you're very very comfortable with the doctor that you're going to and make sure that you communicate 100% to the doctor exactly what you want because sometimes the process of booking a surgery especially when you book it out of your hometown everything is done virtually and sometimes you don't meet the doctor until the morning of your surgery and that's your time to say exactly what you want and I'm gonna tell you the process is gonna feel rushed they're gonna rush to put the markings on you but that's where you have to slow them down and be like wait hey this is what I want and like really make sure that the markings match what you're saying um, because that's definitely something that I rushed myself and I was just like caught up into the moment and I didn't slow everyone down to be like wait 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 this is exactly what I want and I wish I could have done that so just it's your body slow the process down and make sure that your wants and your needs are clearly communicated to that doctor all right that's it for this video I hope it was helpful give this video a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments down below bye guys